Hey guys, Jacob Dupre here at Sweetwater. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create a song in FL Studio 20. No matter what your experience is with DAW or making music in general, I'm gonna start from the very bottom and show you some really simple things to help you get started making music. So I'm gonna put on my headphones. I've got some Sony stereo headphones here for monitoring, and we're gonna start from the beginning. So we got FL Studio, open it up, and a new project will open. There it is. It always plays a really cool little sound when it opens. So what we wanna to get to is the main window. We go to view, and you do your playlist. So this is your playlist. This is where you will see the tracks, which are where you're gonna put your patterns that you create in this list over here. Every time you start a new program in FL, you'll start with these four. You'll have a kick, a clap, a hat, and a snare. And this is the way that you can go between the different instruments. So I'm actually controlling that with the Akai MPK Mini because I have a program that allows me to control different functions in FL with the pads. So if I turn CC on right here, now I can cycle between instruments. So here's the kick, clap, hat, and snare. Okay, I wanna create a beat, I'm ready to go. So we've already got the tempo set at 130 beats per minute. We'll just leave it there. If I click this pad, now I've got record mode on, but I can also go here and arm it with the mouse, of course. And this little button right here, it will do a count in. So if you wanna record a kick beat, for instance, you don't want it to just start recording immediately because you need to get that tempo in your head. So if I click this three, two, one, which you can see there when I click play, it counted down for me. So you saw up here, up by the time code, gave me a four, three, two, one. So we're gonna record a kick drum beat. So here we go. Cool, now this is pattern one, right? That is what we've recorded in pattern one. So when we select pattern one and double click, we get what's called a piano roll. And now we can see those four notes we played. So turn record mode off. It's just a one bar loop, that's all it is. Now, you say, okay, I wanna add a clap to that. I'm thinking I might do something like boom, 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 clap, boom, boom, like that. I've got my count in, I'm gonna enable record again, and I'm gonna change to clap, which I can do from the keyboard. Click play. Now I like that, but I might wanna add like a little extra fill at the end of that clap, so I can record over it and add it. Okay, I like that, I like where that's going. Now, what you'll see is that this pattern contains a recorded track of kick and clap all in one. But if you wanted to, you could create a new pattern, which you can do two things. You can either click the plus here, click the plus down here to create a new pattern, now it's gonna ask you to name it. I could name this clap, click okay, click the check. Now open my channel rack again and now I've got a new pattern ready to record. So if I wanted to go back to this pattern, I could take out the claps, which you do by secondary clicking and dragging. Now I'm just back to a kick on this pattern. But if I go to the clap pattern, open that back up, now it's blank. So if I wanted to record that same clap, I can do it like this. So now I'm starting to get the makings of a beat. I've got this pattern, which I'll go ahead and name kick. So now I've got a kick pattern and a clap pattern. Now I'm thinking I'd like to have a hi-hat. So I'll create another pattern for that, just to follow this way that we're going here. Open my channel rack back up. And I'm thinking, let's see, I gotta go down to hat. There's my hat, so. Maybe I'll do like an eighth note pattern like that. If what you play is a little loose, it's okay because FL knows how to snap what you're doing to a perfect rhythm. So you can change those settings right here and what that's called is quantization. So what that's doing is quantizing all the notes you play 
to the grid, which is determined by the settings you make. So if you go here to none, now it's off. So it will record exactly what I play, exactly in the time, the rhythm that I play it. But here I have it to snap it to a fourth beat. So what that's gonna do is make what you play be synced and sound really rhythmically precise, which is what you want. So now I'm gonna record that hat I wanna do. So I'm thinking like I'll do some eighth notes like this. So here we go. So now I've got my loop, right? The basics of what can be a beat. I've got a kick, a clap, and a hat. But right now they're still just patterns. So I have nothing in my playlist, which is my arrangement where I'm gonna actually arrange my song. So now when you're ready to start bringing them in, remember each of these tracks is not an instrument. It's not tied to a sound. It's these patterns that are tied to a sound. So this is always kick, turn the record off, go to clap, this is my clap, and this is hat. Turn the metronome off now if I want. So now I can drag these to any track that I want. So if I wanted to make track three the kick, I also now need to switch from pattern mode to song mode, which you can do right here, or I have this set up on my pad. So in pattern mode, you're gonna only hear the pattern that you've selected, which you can, you can see here in the channel rack. But when you go to song mode, you will see this ticker right here, this green ticker, move along with the arrangement. And right now it's set to repeat once it gets to the end of whatever patterns I've inserted, it'll go back to the beginning. So now I have my kick here, but I could put it on track two if I wanted. And it will always sound like the kick because again, that instrument is tied to this specific pattern. Well, let's just say we'll make track one the kick, we'll put a clap in track two, and we'll put our hat here. Now all three of those patterns will sound together. And now we've got a basic groove going. Right now in our song, we only have one bar of loop, right? We have this. We don't have any melody instruments or chordal instruments. So let's add something. So we go over here to our channel rack. When you wanna add an instrument, click the plus here. And now this is all the plugins you have available. All these plugins are native to FL. One that's really simple that I like is this 3X oscillator. So now that I have this open, again, you see that tracker moving. So now that it's on the oscillator, the 3X, now that's the sound I'll get when I play the keyboard. All right, so that's what I've got. Now what I'm also gonna do right now, because I'm thinking about it, is select the channel to the mixer that I want. If you're new to that, a mixer is basically where all the instruments, all the audio tracks, whatever you have, they will all be sent to a specific channel, which is then where you can literally mix them together and put different effects to change the sound and improve your mix. If you wanna take a quick look at that, this is the mixer here. So right now I have one, two, three, four, five assigned. So if I click play on my track, you'll see that this is where my kick's going, this is where my clap is going, and this is where my hat is going. And then the os this will go to five, so. Now I wanna create some kind of line, right? Something that can go with this drum beat that I'm doing. I'm gonna go back to pattern, see what I can come up with. Let's listen to our beat again. Let's go back to song mode. When you're coming up with ideas and you've got a drum beat down, it's cool to go back to song mode for a second, listen to your whole loop put together, and you can mess on the keyboard and kind of play some things. Maybe I'll play a chord. Yeah, let's come up with a couple chords that we'd like here to go with this loop. I like that, that's cool. But you might notice this loop is longer than our current pattern. So these patterns are set automatically to be one bar, but the pattern I'm playing is longer than that. So what we're gonna do is create a new pattern. So we can do that over here. Let's call this, um, 
mm, chords one. So this is chord pattern one. So again, when we're in our channel rack, let's go ahead and go here and click detached so that when we go to another window, this doesn't close every time, which gets annoying. So you go to chords. Now we're on chords one, so completely blank. Now this is where you select how long your pattern is, right here. See it's getting longer and shorter. When you do that on an instrument like this, see that? So that's just extending the pattern length. But we want to keep these at one bar. But let's go ahead and make the chord pattern two bars by secondary clicking. And now there's these presets. So you get one bar, two bar, four bar, eight bar. That will make it a set length. So now we've got two bars here. That should line up right. Let's go to pattern mode. Turn our metronome back on. Sounds good. Okay, record enable. Let's record us a little uh, chord part. Cool, that got pretty close. Now the quantization that we have on kind of obscured a little bit of what I wanted to play. So this is a good opportunity where we can go into the piano roll. So you see here, this is what I recorded. This is what it'll look like in the channel rack. But if you click on it, now we can see the individual notes that I played in the piano roll. Turn record off. So these notes, this is what's dragging over that I don't like, which wasn't exactly what I played. So I'm gonna drag that back, make it nice and tight. And actually, I might go to my select tool right here. You see, these are all the tools that you have that do different things. We'll talk about them as we need them. So right here we have the select tool, which allows me to select a whole block. Right now, I'm gonna, let's see, we're gonna play it again. I think I want to change the length of this. Two tools that you'll find you use a lot, I find that I use a lot, is select and the draw tool. So draw will allow you just to move notes around and allow you to change the length like this, which is what I'd like to do now. I think I'm going to shorten this. Let's listen to that. Actually, I think I'm going to keep that that length, go back to select, and then I'm going to change the length of this to be like that. I think that's pretty good for now. I may tweak it some more. And now I'm going to drag this into my project. I've got this loop. But now what I need to do is have the drum loops continue to the end of where I have this. Of course, I'll extend this out farther. But for now, let's just set up our basic sound that we're going to start with. So here we go. Oh, let's go back to song mode. So we play in our playlist. And actually, let's make sure that we're putting the kick here. Let's go ahead and rename this chords. We'll color it something nice, like that purple. Sure. Now, this is the loop we have. Cool. Now we've got kick, clap, hat to make our drum beat. We've got chords to lay us down some harmony. We need a bass. So let's go to track five. We'll, well, we'll end up putting our bass in track five, but first we need to create a new instrument over here in our channel rack. So we click the plus. Let's go to more plugins. You can do a lot of great things with the plugins that come in Fruity Loops, and they offer a lot of those instruments and they're very cool, but you may have other plugins that you like. You know, for instance, I really like working with the contact library. So if I go to more plugins, now this is the list of all the plugins I have available outside of FL. If I go to contact five, double click, load for a second. Part of working with DAWs is waiting for things to load. And there it is. All right, so now we have contact. I think I'd like to select uh, electric bass. So I'll go over here to pre-bass sound. Down an octave.
Cool. Now let's lay down a bass part. Now probably what I'm gonna do, if you're new to chords or making beats or loops, this chord is a major chord and the lowest note is this G flat. So I'm gonna kind of stay with the lowest note in the chord or what you'd call the root note of the chord to make my bass line. Let's stay in song mode. I'm gonna make sure that I have my contact five selected. Let's go ahead and send it to channel six in the mixer. We could rename it. Let's rename it bass since we know this instance of contact is going to be the bass. We could also go ahead and rename this and call this bass and give it its own color because we know we're gonna put the bass pattern here. We also should go ahead and create a new bass pattern. Let's call this bass one, we'll say, or let's just call it bass. That's good. Now let's listen to our loop again. Cool, so I'm definitely hearing that kick, boom, 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 that rhythm. I think I might want the bass to follow that rhythm. So send it down an octave. Let's try this out. So I like that, I, th I think that's really cool. And if I go to pattern mode, we can just listen to the kick. I'm letting the bass line follow the rhythm of the kick. So let's record some bass. Cool, there it is, we got our bass track. Now we've already named this track bass, so we can drag it in. And now we go back to song mode and let's hear what we got. Turn record off, we're not recording. Okay, now we've got a pretty basic loop, right? Let's go ahead and save, it's always good to save. Let's call this Fruity Loopy Man. Sure, I love that title, it's gonna be a hit song. All right, now we've got our kick, we've got drums, chords, and bass. We can start dragging them around and making an arrangement, right? So you wouldn't just want to listen to this for five minutes. It would probably drive you insane. It needs to have some flow to it, right? We need to start from somewhere and build in. So a very simple way you can do that, especially when you're first getting started making loops, making songs, is to layer things. To start from something simple and layer. Let's just say we're going to drag some of our patterns over. We're going to just start with our kick. So let's see what that sounds like. Turn our metronome off so we're only listening to our patterns. So now we could go to, after two bars of kick, we could go to just hat. Have the kick continue, of course. Now, here's an instance where we can use a different tool. So this is the draw tool, but the paint tool, which is right here, is very cool because a lot of times when you're making loops, especially in something like FL, you want these patterns to continue for a long time. You know, you'll have a, this kick pattern go on for eight, maybe 16 bars. Once you're in paint, if I add to this measure and I drag, it will continue adding them as far as I want. So I'm probably gonna want this kick to go on a pretty long time. This is how you control the zoom. So now I have more bars available into the rest of my arrangement. Let's get back in here Ooh. and make some more kicks. There we go. So let's hear what we've got now. All right, that sounds pretty good. Now we're not gonna want the chords to come in just yet. So let's drag those off. So now we've got two measures of just kick, two measures of just kick with hat. Now let's use our paint tool and put some hats in there. Keep dragging these over until we're ready for them. Really, we could just delete them. Let's go ahead and delete them until we're ready to bring them back in, which we'll drag from over here. So let's hear what it sounds like after the kick and hat and then the clap comes in. We may decide, let's use our select tool. 
let's say we decide that we want the clap to come in first and the hat to come in after. Let's go back to our paint tool, click clap, drag this out. All right, so I think by about right here, this bar right here, which is bar seven, we're gonna bring in the bass. So let's take our bass loop. Or actually, let's do chords first. I think saving the bass for last might actually sound nice. So let's listen to what we got. Now we're gonna obviously want this to continue. So let's go ahead and add some more chords in. Make that go for a while. Make the hat go for a while. Let's zoom in here so it's a little bit easier to see again. There we go. Let's add in our hat sounds. Add in some more claps like that. Now, when we get to this part, Haha, -ha, that was pretty sneaky, wasn't it? I was able to add the bass in before it got there. Now I'm going to put the hat here and start with hat just to see how that sounds. Let's make sure, zoom in a little bit, make sure these are lined up on beat one. I just had a little idea. Obviously we've got this basic loop, but the song needs to go somewhere else, right? So let's say we wanna stop this pattern about right here. We're gonna to wanna to continue this hat on, of course. We're gonna to wanna to continue this clap going here. I'd like to hear a break right there. Bump, bump, bump. So let's break it off. And that's something cool you can do. This pattern is, of course, only two beats long, which ends right here. But if you want to shorten it, you can. Or if you want to extend it, of course, you'd have to go in here and then extend the length if you want to put more sound here. But in this case, I don't want to record a whole new pattern. I just want this one to stop right here. So it will stop where I've dragged it. So cool. I like that. Now we're going to have a new phase of the song right here that's gonna start. We need to generate some content for that. Let's say we go back to our kick. I'm gonna create a new kick track. Instead of creating a whole new pattern, you can clone the current pattern. So if I go to kick, I have secondary click, and then I click clone, now I have kick number two. Now I open that. Let's listen to this again. I think I'd like this to be like sort of a halftime thing now right here. So if I go here, go to kick. Now I can change my piano roll. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these notes. Secondary click, drag. You can see that brings up the little delete button. Now those notes in that pattern are gone. I kind of like how you can pitch these. So let's check this out. Turn our metronome back on. I kind of like that pattern. So let's go back to pattern mode. Let's play with this. Oh, always helps to turn record on, doesn't it? All right, I like that. And now just for fun, even though we have separated out kick, clap, hat, all the different parts, let's go ahead and record all of the instruments for the drum loop in this one pattern. Let's record a snare part with this kick. Got record on, click in, here we go. Cool. 
cool. Let's add a hat part to that. I like that. So arrangement wise, we're creating a song, right? We've got this loop that goes when we come out of it. Now we're back into song mode. Start here. Cool. So we've got like a different beat going now in a different part of the song. So we go here, kick, kick. Let's add some kick. Cool. Let's create a slightly different chord progression to go right here. We can go to our chord one. Let's clone it again. So we'll do second click, go to clone. Now we have chords two. Now something very easy that you can do is you say, well, I want to use like the same progression, but I might just want to move it to a different key, right? Different key center. So let's try that because it'll be easy. We can make it sound different. So we've got our select, select it all. We'll go back to draw. Let's move it up to here. Let's see what that pattern sounds like. Maybe one more. Cool. Now we've got chord one, number two. We could rename at this point if we wanted to. We could rename it to chord two, just like that. Now let's drag this into our chord track. All right, here we go. I like that. So it's kind of a variation on our first loop. Now we have the makings of an arrangement that we can continue to add to. We can say if we want to put a bass part on that, let's also go ahead and clone our bass line, open that up in our channel rack, which of course you can do from over here, or you can learn the shortcut for that. And now let's add a bass line. We'll go in here, once again, we'll delete our old notes. Actually, if we don't want to do that, we could just drag all of these notes up to the same pitch level that we just did for the chords. So right here, let's listen to our bass pattern. I moved that up the piano roll, transposed it, the same distance as the chords, so they should gel together pretty nicely. Let's check that out. Cool. And I may want to change the rhythm of this. What I might do is just take all these notes out and just put the root of the chord on beat one. Let's see what that sounds like. Actually, I may like to hear like a bump bump. Now, the other cool thing about draw mode, if you click the draw here and I add it in, all I have to do is click and I can add notes wherever I want to add them. And I can take them all away by secondary clicking again and dragging delete. But I just want to put one note right here so I have bump bump two, three, four, bump bump two, just like that. I want this note to be shorter, drag it that way. I like that. All right, so here we go. Now we've got our loop. Cool. Now we've got like a secondary loop to our other one. This could maybe be a different section of the song. If you were gonna eventually add lyrics to this or a melody, this would maybe be like a verse. If this was like kind of your intro or your chorus loop, this could maybe be a verse loop depending on how you want to build the song. Let's check out what we've got all the way through from the top.
creating a whole song, you know, something that's a few minutes long, takes a whole lot of work, a lot more time than what I just did to create that simple loop. So what I did was open another project that I've been working on for a few days that is way more fleshed out with more instruments and different effects and lead-ins that I've added to each section. And you can see here that it can get pretty busy. There's a lot of patterns going on and it goes all the way through our playlist to here. And I've stayed organized. Remember I told you about how important it is to be organized. I have all the different instruments organized and then these are all of my patterns. So I've created a great deal more patterns than what we had before. But that's because I wanted to make a full song with rise and falls, different dynamic changes, instruments coming in and out. Let me just show you some of what I've done in this arrangement. Kind of skip to the end of where you might be if you create a whole song. Now we have the mixer. I've added some plugins over here. So you have all these slots and this is where you can add plugins to help mix your sounds. You have some simple tools, things like a compressor, you have a limiter, stereo enhancer, another compressor, and then on the master I have a compressor limiter, and then a dB meter which lets me look at the sound level that I'm creating. When I play back this track, I can see where my song falls on a dB level, which are decibels. Now, if you could see here, this is the zero, so when you're mixing, a good rule of thumb is you don't want it to go above that. And part of that will be done through compression and then also a limiter, which will keep it from going over zero, which we call peaking. Also what I've done, this is how you pan. So when you're panning, that's just changing an instrument going from left to right. If you're listening in speakers, you'll hear it travel left, you'll hear it travel right. And a lot of times you can do that to create more space in the mix. If you keep everything in the middle, it can sound really muddy. Like there's too many layers going on, but as soon as you start separating things out, it can start to sound a little clearer, and you can give each instrument its own space. So let's listen to a little bit of this track, and you can get a feel for what a full arrangement will sound and look like. Let's go to draw mode, go to our beginning. Okay, so you're done making your song, you're really happy with it, you've tweaked things in the mixer, you've added different instruments and plugins, everything is exactly what you want it to sound like. You can go to File, you can go to Export, you can export a few different formats. You can export as a WAV, MP3, a FLAC file, MIDI file if you want to. But let's say we're going to do a WAV file. You go to WAV, you name it whatever we want. I don't know, test my connection, <laughs> underscore and then V1, so now that's version one, and I'll click save. But if I come back, I do a completely different mix, 
I might call that V2. And then as I go along, I'll have a folder with all these different mixes that I've done. And so I can go back, I can listen to what it sounded like when I started. Do I like that? Do I like what I changed to version two? It's just one way that you can stay organized. You may find your own way that works for you. So in this case, if I wanna save it to my Dropbox, I just click save. Now here's where all the options you have for rendering. The default is just to do the full song, to leave a tail, leave a remainder on the tail, which will add some space at the end. You have the wave file bit depth at 16, but you can change that to 24 or 32. You can do stereo, mono, merge, mono left or right signal only, and then some different things for the quality that you have here. But when you're first starting out, the default will probably suit what you need just fine. So you'll click start, and now we're exporting. Thanks for checking out how to make a song in FL Studio. If you have any questions about FL, if you'd like to purchase it, or you're interested in any of the gear here to build your own studio, you can call your Sweetwater sales engineer. They'll be happy to help you. Thanks for watching.